Hi guys, welcome back. In today's video, I want to show you a few tricks as to how you can model a cushion in 3ds Max. So first of all, the only uh, the only thing that you want to ask yourself is what is the level of detail that you require for your uh, cushion to have for your scene. So the easiest way to start off would be with a low polygon cushion or something that would simply be in your scene. For that, uh, I'm gonna use a box. Okay, just make it, well, let's go ahead and make this, let's say 40 by 40, height, let's see, 20 or 15. Yeah, this should work. I'm gonna center it right away. There we go, now it's in the, the zero axis. And this is what we have so far, a simple box. Now, uh, the easiest way to model a low poly cushion from this would be to simply divide this box in half, something like this. Now, what we want to do is put an edit poly on top of our box or right click and convert to edible poly. Anything uh, works. So. I'm gonna go now and switch over to my top viewport. In here, I'm going to select all the edge vertices, but make sure that you uh, hold down control and draw out a line like this or selection line. Otherwise, if you just click, you're gonna miss on the lower uh, vertices. So by selecting the four edge ones, you can now switch over to uniform scale and scale them out outwards like this and now I can also scale them in on the Z until we get something like this okay now we got something that looks like a deformed box away from uh, quite a way from looking like an actual pillow or a cushion. But all we gotta do now is drop on an extra turbo smooth modifier on top of it. So click on turbo smooth and we get something resembling a low poly cushion. We can put a two iterations so we get a bit more uh, smoother edges and you have something like this. This can work for your projects if you only need a low polygon or a low level detailed prop to use in your scene now I'm uh, the only thing you can change this uh, cushion if you drop down uh, FFD modifier on top of it so you can put a FFD a 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 or even 4 by 4 but a th 3 by 3 you can select any of the middle parts and just like put a pull them in or pull them downwards whatever works for you or however you want to deform your cushion now before we call it a quits over here I want to show you another trick usually when you're working with cushions you are gonna be asked to put some kind of a piping on the edges of the cushion or the ed edges of the pillow the way to do this is well quite easy if you're following this uh, particular way of making a uh, cushion, you drop in an edit poly above the turbo smooth. Now you just need to select one of the edges where you want the piping to follow, click loop, and now we have that loop going across the entire pillow. The great thing about uh, working with Max is that you can utilize already existing geometry. Which means that here I can take this edge loop and create a shape out of it. I'm going to click here and call it piping. And make sure it's set as a linear. Otherwise, if it's smooth, you're going to get some uh, smoothness in the line and it's not going to follow the contour of the or the shape of the pillow. Click OK. So here now we have. A line with this line what we can do is depending on the kind of piping we want if it's a simple 
pipe looking piping all we gotta do is go into rendering turn on enable in render and viewport and we get that piping going around the entire cushion if we drop a turbo smooth on top of it voila we've ended up with the piping going around the entire pillow but before we do that let me show you how you can make uh, one of those piping that's uh, like st it's a piece of cloth sticking outwards so the only thing you got to do is select that uh, spline again hold down shift and with the scale drag out one more copy of this make sure it's a copy click OK now you have to attach this one or the new one with the previous one so here we go both of these are now one line if you click on it you can see them or uh, you can see all the vertices that are in the scene now we can uh, go into interpolation you can either uh, decrease these steps or we can leave them like this it simply depends on the level of detail you want to retain in your lines so on top of this I can drop in uh, edit poly and we get something like this now the thing is it's okay but usually uh, these kind of pipings have a bit of uh, width on them so something like a shell and there you go if we drop in a shell like this Let's go one millimeter and this should work like this but if we want to have a more rounded look we're gonna have to drop in a turbo smooth and this is where the problem is gonna arise the first initial problem you drop in a turbo smooth you end up with something like this so I'm gonna delete this delete the shell isolate our um, base model and simply select uh, two of the vertices that are right next to each other we'll right click and connect we're gonna have this issue at the beginning but as soon as we start connecting more of them they're like this I have a uh, hotkey for this or a shortcut so that's why I don't have to uh, otherwise if you don't have the connect uh, copy just click right click connect there we go you just need to make sure that we have all the vertices connected with the vertices that's on the other side of that set vertice. Uh, we can probably just uh, go ahead and do one quarter of this and then uh, symmetry it on the other side, but this is gonna work just right for this. So let me go ahead, make sure we have these few more connected, and there we go. Now, if we do the same thing with a shell on top of it, like this, all we gotta do here is turn in an edit poly so we can add some supporting loops. Go connect. Make sure we have it on the bottom as well, which we don't. There we go. Connect. Two segments, pinch them out near the edges click OK now we can add some edges here in the middle but it's not gonna be visible because it's a very minor detail so when we drop down the turbo smooth it's not very visible and there we go like this selected we can simply go ahead select the rim Click once for grow and now we can simply move this outwards or inwards or how however we want it to look like and there we go now this was the easiest way to make a low poly cushion or a low poly pillow now let's say that you want to have a bit more detail so let's call this a low level detail let's say you want to have one more version where you would have a bit more detail or the medium level detail the easiest way to get this kind of result is again I'm gonna start with the box this time around though I'm gonna make it so it's well let's go ahead and make it something like 
I don't know, let's, let's do a 50 by 50. And the important part here is make sure the height is not so big because we're gonna get the height in a different manner now. So I'm gonna put something like 0 0.5 or half a centimeter. By doing this, now I need to get back in the modify panel and here where it says two segments, I'm gonna try and put 20 as well as here 20. So we have 20 by 20. We have a box that's pretty much resembling a grid. Now, the way that I can make this into a nice looking pillow is by utilizing a modifier called, called cloth modifier. You click it here and right away you get a bunch of options. We're not gonna dabble too deep into these options. So we're just gonna go ahead and click on the object properties. Here, this is gonna open up a window on the side and you can see another bunch of options as well. The only thing you gotta do here is on the left side, select the box 002, where this is our main mesh. And then on the side over here, or on the right side, you click on the cloth. Uh, as soon as you click it, all of these options are now um, open to you, so you can change them around. But it's a good thing that you don't have to go around and change all of them individually because you have built-in presets that come with Max. So all you gotta do is click on the presets and choose one of the presets for uh, particular cloths. For this one, I'm just gonna use any one. Let's go with cotton. It really doesn't make too much of a difference. So I'm gonna click cotton. And now this is the important part over here where it says pressure. Just click it and drop it to like something, I don't know, 30 or so, anything works. So click 30. Click OK. So we have a cloth modifier. We've set up some pressure on it. Now we got to see how this thing is going to look like. So all we got to do is click on simulate local and click it away right away. Right away, we can see that we've gotten a pretty decent result. Now, because I stopped it in midair, while it was still deforming, we can see some irregularities, but I made this um, because I wanna show you how you can fix those irregularities. Otherwise, if I just leave the simulate local, it's gonna drop down, something like this, but all of those irregularities are now gone. So I'm gonna leave it like this, okay, or just go back, Control Z once, so I can get those regularities back. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna go and in the hierarchy, affect pivot only and center it to object because I don't want my pivot to be floating around or above it. So I'm gonna go ahead and Alt Q so I can isolate this. And on top of it, I'm gonna drop an edit poly. So we have a nice looking pillow, but the problem is that since I stopped it prematurely or, or uh, before you had the ch chance to be flattened out, we have some issues. I wanna show you how you can fix those issues. For example, you see all of these on the lower part over here. All you have to do is while you're in polygon mode, go down where it says paint deformation. Here you have an option where it says push, pull, and right next to it you have a relax. When you click on relax, you're gonna get something like a brush on your screen. And on the side, down here you have brush size, which is 20, I'm gonna put it 10 centimeters now. And since I'm on the relax, when I'm gonna click, click it, it's gonna try to relax the tension between all of the polygons. There we go, you see. It's the manual way of relaxing the surface tension. So if you have any spots that were simply too deformed, 
can just go ahead with the brush and brush them out. And here we go, we turn on the relax, turn on the polygon, get out of the isolation mode, and there we have our second or the medium detail cushion following or the medium uh, detail below looking like this same idea would go for the piping just in this case you would have to go ahead select one of the edges here click ring it's a ring hold down control click on the polygon and you select all the polygons now you can either extrude these outwards if you want to have them like this or with the same uh, selection like this you go ahead and connect it once so you have one line in the middle click ok but before i do this i want to make sure that i have a turbo smooth on top of it so it's something like this there we go you can even see some of the wrinkling happening over here but with the turbo smooth added we don't even have to do it i'm gonna put an it probably doesn't even have to put an extra edge in the middle because we get one from the turbo smooth so here we go ahead create shape piping o2 again same idea either go around and make the piping like this or extrude the line outwards and get it to look something like this so we have the low poly version and we have the medium poly version so i would cut the video short here because for the high level uh, or the high detail uh, version of the model i want to make it in a marvelous designer and show you guys how you can do it and then re-import it back into max